the second half of our story is, is like I say, is about is, a, is about is about the probatest system. It's about biological farming, and and it's about. I, I guess the message that um, I want to get across is it's 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 a difference between being a price setter and a price taker, and 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 that's that's something that Ewan's always talked to us about. Um, it has been a bit frustrating in the fact that um, you, you know we we knew that we had to go through this journey. We knew that. There were things on the farm that needed to happen, that needed to change. Um, we'd, we'd, we'd sort of gone through the whole the chemistry thing. We, um, you know, the biology thing seemed to be up and down a wee bit. It was, to, you know, it was sort of difficult, a bit frustrating. Um, we, we, we were, we were, we had a goal. We were trying to achieve it. It was a little bit frustrating. And then, you know, we, we wanted to sort of try and market our product, but we knew, well, we believed that our product wasn't wasn't as good as it should be, in the fact that. Um, you know, because we were having problems on farm, they were all indicators to the fact that the farm probably wasn't performing as good as it should be, and the quality of the product wouldn't be as good as it should be. So, for us, um, all things changed, and I believe it was the 9th of September, um, 2008. Um, you were never told us that, but that's that's the day that we worked that out. It all changed. Um, that was the day that um, you and started working with John Godwin mm -hmm. to break down um, chloride hydrocarbons. And, and the soil, which our property was absolutely lousy with. The, um, the previous family that owned our farm, that owned it for 90 years, um, they couldn't sleep at night if there was a thistle out there somewhere. So, <laughs> they, as they got older, they figured the easiest way to deal with the problem was either helicopters, fixed wing planes, spraying contractors, motorbikes, tractors, anything that squirted spray at the back would um, save them a bit of work. Um, and yeah, probably some years they, 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 they admit now that there were years they couldn't spend any money on fertiliser or any farm maintenance because they spent it all on herbicides. So we inherited a problem that really, to be honest, we, um, we, we, we thought we had no idea about. We, um, we, as we got into this biological system, we thought biology had tidy all that mess up. Um, and I'm sure it would have eventually, um, but we didn't have eventually. We were under a bit of pressure to try and make a buck out of this. So part of our problem was the fact that the farm wasn't performing. The other part was that, that animal health. We had animal health issues that um, we had we had problems happening there that we just we just we didn't know about. Um, we had animals dying for all sorts of reasons. Ewan said the other day that he had Angus cows that just dropped like they'd been shot between the eyeballs. Um, yeah, we saw that too. Um, and it really came to a head to us one day just before the farm was actually treated. We saw a, a, a big Frisian cow die the most violent death that, that you could ever imagine. Um, she sat right up on a, on a brisket and she just smashed her head into the ground until she died. Um, unbelievable. And, and really it was, we, 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 we realise now that it was a, the, the, the whole toxicity thing, she'd just physically been blown to bits. So basically our farm changed on the uh, 9th of September 2008. Um, it literally changed overnight. Once, once a lot of those chlor chloride hydrocarbons had been broken in the soil, um, our animal health basically just improved from that day on. Um, the following summer, our irrigation block doubled growth rates to anything we'd ever had before. Um, it, it, was, it was hugely significant. And, and it was at this point that we realised that our product, our quality of our product had improved and, and, and we really felt that it was um, so significant that it was really time for us to... Um, to get out there and try and sell people some raw milk. So um, that's when we started the whole marketing um, sort of project and it took us a long time to get going. There was a whole lot of things that we realised at that point that we didn't actually know about marketing. And in fact at this point I'd actually like to tell you a little bit of a story about marketing. But um, it, go, it sort of goes like this, that a young fella had sort of studied marketing and he decided that um, he, was, he, was, he, he knew enough about marketing now he was going to make a buck out of it. So he scro scrolled the internet and he found a donkey for sale. So he um, duly rang up the farmer, they negotiated a price of $500. Um, he went down to the he sent the cheque, went down to the farm a week later to pick up the donkey. And the farmer says, look, I'm sorry, he's dead. The donkey's dead. And the young fellow says, I've got a problem, chuck him on the trailer, I'll take him home. It'll be sweet. So um, he did. <laughs> He did. So a couple of weeks later, the um, the farmer saw the young fellow. He says, "Oh, how did you get over that donkey?" He says, "Oh, sweet as." He said, "I made uh, four hundred and ninety-eight dollars out of the deal." He said, "What?" He said, "Yeah." He said, "Simple." He said, "What I did was I raffled him." 
And he said, I sold um, 500 tickets at two bucks each. He said, that was $1,000. You got 500, I got 498. He said, what happened to the other $2? He said, well, he said, the fellow that actually won the raffle got a bit grumpy when he uh, realised the donkey was dead, so I had to give him his money back. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, like I say, we, um, we, we had to learn some marketing skills. Um, having said that, it's probably a bad example because I don't sell dead milk. So, um, we, uh, the, the marketing journey was, um, was a really interesting one. Um, what, 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 the first thing that we discovered is that um, you know we um, you know we, we, we knew we had a good product. It was we, we were prepared to take it to the people, but but the people didn't know what it was. Like they, they you know we, we suddenly realised that we actually had to educate the people, and, and, and we struggled for a little bit. Um, a lot of it became word of mouth. Um, the product pretty much sold itself, and um, in fact our best our best marketing tool was that baby right there. Um, as, as, as our consumers um, started buying their milk, some of them some of them knew that it was good for them, a lot of them just thought it tasted real good. Um, and one person tells two people, and away we go. Um, having said that, we actually were a bit lucky in the fact that we were able to take a huge shortcut, and um, I was fortunate enough to meet Ben Warren. And um, I, you know, ben, ben came to Waipak and did a presentation in Waipak. His message was a very good one, you all heard it last night. A very good, very good message, and the work that Ben's doing um, in, in, in not only in Hawke's Bay, but a lot of the, a lot of the people that he's working with are, are actually from outside Hawke's Bay. They come for the weekend and, and do the course. Um, I'm seeing now a lot of the result of that. Um, actually, I'll, I'll just tell you a, a, one example. Um, I dropped milk at a local veggie shop, and um, the lady, the, the, the mother who actually um, the, the girls run the shop, and the mother drops veggies off bits and pieces. They've got their own market garden. And um, Jill was telling me one day that you know, since, since Ben's course and she's addicted to the milk and it's all great, you know. She said the interesting thing for her is that her, her whole body mass has changed. Her weight has stayed exactly the same as it was before, but basically she's lost the fat and she's gained muscle. She said there's two ways she knows that. One, she's lost the fat because her boobs have got smaller. I'm like, oh, I don't need to know this. <laughs> but she said that, you know, at her age, she was struggling to start to, to, to lift the crates of milk, uh, sorry, the crates of vegetables. She was struggling to start to handle them, and she was getting to the stage where, you know, she wasn't going to be able to do it anymore. Um, since she's done Ben's course, she said, not a problem. She, 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 she feels 20 years younger. And, you know, I, I just think that's absolutely outstanding that, um, you know... <laughs> There's a few fellas down the back here that need to actually do that course. Actually, <laughs> it didn't, uh, I didn't hear Ben talking too much about beer, so I don't know how you're going to get them along. Actually, <laughs> anyway. So if I just, um, yeah, basically, I just um, there's a couple of things here. I just wanted to um, the, the the trick of the marketing the milk was was always we we, we want to work within the law. Um, we we. We didn't want to be delivering milk after dark. The idea of sort of sneaking stuff around in the middle of the night really didn't appeal to me very much. So um, we, 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 um, we flipped through, found out about the uh, milk legislation. Um, it's very simple. The milk legislation simply says that it has to be sold from the farm. I can only sell, I can't sell more than five litres per person per sale. And I can't, I can't, sell, um, I can't sell milk to anybody that's going to on sell it. So it's quite simple. But the trick of the tricky part of that was that um, the milk has to be sold from farm. So um, how we overcame that? Basically, we realised that if you order the milk, um, if you order anything, you have a legal obligation to pay for it. So therefore, you own it. So, so basically, I don't take any milk out of my gate unless somebody already owns it. So that's that's basically how we how we got around that. We used several conventional lawyers and um, a, a, a couple of people that are involved with common law. Um, to have a look at our at, at our um, at our proposal, and um, yeah, nobody could find, nobody could pick any holes in it. So we're we're, we're sort of doing it conf confidently, even though we um, we are trying to fly below the radar. We still don't want to put a hand up. I don't I don't want to have to. I don't want to test case. I don't want to. I just want to be left alone to sell milk. So um, yeah, we we are sort of trying to do it below the radar. Having said that, we're we're amazed at how it has grown. We're amazed that, like I say, it's it's growing exponentially. Um, we